How is it going guys? Slippery Jim here. Welcome to a brand new video. On this one I'm very excited to bring to you guys because it is going to be showcasing every single weapon in Cold War Zombies that we have right now uh, at the start of Season 1 here in Die Machine. And I'm going to be showing you what every single weapon is like pack-a-punched as well as before it's pack-a-punched. And I'm going to be showing you the legendary quality triple pack-a-punch version of all of these weapons. I'm also going to be going through all these weapons and ranking them from the very worst to the very best weapon and explaining to you why I've ranked them this way. And I did a lot of testing over several weeks to uh, make this video and I found some surprising stuff actually and some really useful tips in how to use some of these weapons. So hopefully you guys enjoy that and benefit from that. And just before we get started, I'll also explain the uh, system that I use to try and make this a fairly um, sort of fair and reasonable method of ranking uh, all of the weapons here. So what I've done is basically tested them all without any attachments. So there's probably about 30 attachments per weapon that uh, introduce a range of variables. So just to keep a flat baseline test, I am testing these without any attachments. And also, uh, keep in mind that all of my skills are ranked up to maximum. So that includes things like perks, um, the weapon skills, and so forth that affect the damage that you'll be seeing. Um, when I used the weapons, I also made sure that I had uh, all of the perks equipped that we currently have at the moment. Except for Elemental Pop, because I didn't want to introduce another RNG damage factor into the, into the testing mix. Um, and also, I haven't used alternate ammo uh, like Deadwire, for example, because that also adds another RNG factor to the damage. When I'm talking about gun damage, I'll be talking about the typical damage the gun does in, an, in normal use in a game of zombies. So, uh, I'm not going to be talking about the, those peaks of damage you might get in very specific cir circumstances, generally speaking. Um, I'm going to be talking about the average damage that you would usually get for the weapon. And it's worth noting that guns can do different damage based on the multiplier for the area of the zombie that you hit with the bullet or whatever the projectile is. And also the range that you're shooting from um, for the weapon. As well as whether it's a critical damage um, hit or not, which is indicated by yellow damage numbers on the screen. And also other factors as well. So if you do see that double crit damage, um, keep in mind that that is the result of the Deadshot Daiquiri upgrade perk. So what that does is it gives you double critical damage on full health zombies. So if you see that, you'll know hopefully why you're getting da I'm getting double damage on some of these crits. And uh, yeah, keep in mind that uh, it's pretty rare in the high rounds to get those double yellow crits because a lot of zombies are not at full health due to factors like splash damage, penetration damage, plague hound gas, and all that stuff. Uh, also, when considering the damage of the gun, it's worth remembering that normal zombies' health caps out at uh, around 41 to 30,001 health for normal zombies and stays the same uh, basically from that point onwards, no matter how high the round is that you get to. Um, and when looking at the rankings as well, please keep in mind that new weapons are definitely going to be added. We already know about the Street Sweeper shotgun that will come mid-season here in Season 1. We haven't got it yet. And there's going to be some new melee weapons and obviously new weapons in the future as well. Also, the existing weapons can be buffed, nerfed, or balanced at any time, which can change how, how effective they are to use. And could affect potentially, you know, the rating in the future. Also, there will likely be new perks added, field upgrades possibly, and other additions made to zombies in the future here in Cold War. So these could be a factor as well if you're watching this in the future. Anyway, guys, we're going to get started here. But before we do, let me know your top weapons in the comments section from Cold War Zombies. And if I missed anything or there's a fun fact about any of these weapons or the pack punch names or anything else, let me know in the comments section below. And uh, let's get started with the first weapon. Number 37. 
So way down the bottom of our list of 37 weapons, we have number 37, the worst weapon in Cold War Zombies. The M79 grenade launcher used to be called the China Lake in previous Call of Duties. This thing uh, has a ridiculously huge splash damage radius from these grenades that it launches, which can do quite a lot of damage to your armor and your health uh, while using this, unless the impact zone is a long distance away. Um, even Pack Punch, when it becomes the matter dismantler, really the only good thing about it is it gets more ammo than the other explosive weapons in the game. But it takes uh, so many grenades to actually kill a single zombie, even in the low rounds, that this thing is just really, really bad. And best avoided at all costs. Does about 5,296 damage pack a punch, which is great for knocking down zombies, but not so great for killing them. Number 36. Coming in second to last in our list of weapons in Cold War Zombies, we have the Diamati, and this is a three shot burst pistol which features a pretty cute mini foregrip to control recoil. And it's similar to the RK-7 Garrison we used to have in Black Ops 4 Zombies. It has a pretty high rate of fire due to the burst, and it also has most ammo for a pistol in Black Ops uh, Cold War Zombies. A pretty quick reload as well, but at high rounds, it's not really practical, uh, as once the zombies reach that health cap, it would normally take around three bursts to the head to kill a normal zombie. So, uh, pack a punch is called the Dialotti, or Dialotti and Diamori, if dual wielded. And it does about 4,337 damage, typically, pack a punch. So, yeah, it comes in second to last on our list. Number 35. Our first sniper in our list today is the M82. And this is basically the Barrett. It's a 50 cal sniper rifle. And uh, once pack punched, it is called the Anathema. Anathema, by the way, means something that one dislikes. And unfortunately, that's a fitting name for this weapon, at least at the moment, because this thing is really, really bad. What makes it bad is the really slow ADS time, um, the slowest aim down sight of any of the snipers. Um, and even though it's 50 cal, which is a huge caliber of bullet, it actually has the lowest damage of any sniper to the point where it feels like it's bugged and they left an extra zero off the damage numbers. It actually does 13,573 crit damage when pack a punch compared to 35,200 of the Pellington which is not even the best sniper in the game. Yeah, so this thing is pretty bad, and it's uh, it hasn't got a lot going for it, apart from the reload speed. It also has the lowest total ammo of all the snipers. So yeah, it needs a buff pretty badly. Number 34. And so we come to our first assault rifle in this list, which is the FFAR-1, also known as the Winnower when Pack-a-Punched. This is a weapon we have had before in various forms in Call of Duty Zombies, but here in Cold War Zombies, it has a few things going for it, even though it is fair way down the list here at uh, number 33. It has the fastest rate of fire of all the assault rifles, and correspondingly the highest damage per second, around 12 to 13% more DPS than all the other assault rifles. However, it has less total ammo with 350 total ammo when pack punch three times, compared to around the 420 mark for most of the other assault rifles. It also has the lowest damage per bullet of the assault rifles with almost sort of around the two-thirds the damage uh, per bullet of the AK-47. This weapon has 2,466 critical damage when packed punch compared with the AK's 3,346. And as a result, it has a lot less total damage potential. You will have to reload a lot and buy ammo quite a lot for this weapon. Number 30. Three. One of our brand new weapons at the start of Season 1 is the MAC-10 SMG, which looks fairly similar to the Milano as well, which we'll talk about later. This is a very fast-firing, small machine pistol type weapon. And it's a uh, pack punch name, by the way. The Royale with lead is an obvious reference to the Pulp Fiction's Royale with cheese scene which is about the French Big Mac. <laughs> uh, 
But anyway, getting back to the weapon, this has the same total ammo, but much lower damage than the Milano, um, since we were talking about that before. Pack Punch, this does 2,758 damage if you get crits, versus 4,259 of the Milano. Also, total damage potential is, is only 38,000 versus 59,000 of the Milano. So it's really at the bottom of the list here for a reason. And by the way, when I'm talking about total damage potential, what that basically is, is your per bullet damage multiplied by the amount of ammo of the weapon. I wasn't really surprised with these results for the MAC-10, since the MAC-10 has always been a pretty weak weapon in most of the Call of Duties it's been in. Number 32. Next, we have another explosive weapon. This is the RPG, the first of our rocket launchers. And Pack Punch, this thing has the name the CR-17-D20, which is apparently some sort of a RPG tabletop type reference. Uh, I'm not nerdy enough to understand that completely. But anyway, this thing also has the uh, self-harm uh, drawback that we saw with the M79. Although the splash damage radius is not quite as extreme as with that weapon. Pack a punch three times, it still only does 12,800 damage per shot. Although that damage does affect all the zombies um, in the area. So you can group up the zombies and kill it with several rockets in the high rounds if that's your thing. But you're probably better off using the war machine. When Pack-a-Punched, it does reload both rockets in the magazine at once, but it's not quite like the days of Black Ops 2 where you got eight rockets that reloaded at once and were fully automatic. So kind of fun, but probably best to avoid this weapon. Number 31. Up next, we have another assault rifle. This one is the Krieg 6 assault rifle. And I'm not really sure if this is based on a real weapon or not. Uh, it sort of looks, in some ways, a little bit similar to the Galil. Uh, but the Galil is an Israeli weapon, if I recall correctly, whereas this is supposed to be a Spetsnaz weapon. So I'm not sure if this is based on a real-life weapon or not. But anyway, getting to how useful it is in Cold War Zombies, this um, thing does about the same damage per second as the AK-47, which we haven't got to yet and is higher up the list. And it has the same total ammo as well once Pack-a-Punch, which is 420 rounds. Uh, Pack-a-Punch, it's called the Blitzkrieg 99, a very obvious play on words there. So uh, overall, it just doesn't have enough damage potential to get it higher in the list, but it's still sort of okay, just not a top tier weapon compared to those higher in the list. Number 30. Next up, we have another assault rifle. This one is the QBZ-83, and it is actually a bullpup-style Chinese-made uh, assault rifle, similar, actually, to the Type 25, which we've seen in previous Call of Duties. As far as how it performs in COD Zombies here in Cold War, it does have slightly more ammo and slightly more DPS than the XM-4 assault rifle, which is actually coming up in our list um, and it also has a slightly faster reload as well, but other than that, it has very similar stats. Packer Punched, it actually gets the name Yao Guai. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but uh, a Yao Guai is a Chinese monster or demon, interestingly enough. And Packer Punch, this thing does 2,820 damage per bullet if you do get those uh, critical hits. So yeah, it's sort of okay, but not fantastic. Number 29. Next we have the XM4, or the Zenomata 4000 once Pack-a-Punched. Interestingly, if you look carefully at the side of this weapon, you can see stamped just below the ejection port the words, this is my rifle. Uh, and if you're interested, this was actually part of the Rifleman's Creed, which was written during World War II and used to be memorized by new recruits in the US Marine Corps. I don't think it's normally stamped on the side of M4s, but uh, there you go. In Cold War Zombies, however, this weapon has the most ammo of all assault rifles at 490 total rounds when Pack-a-Punched. It also has the second highest rate of fire uh, of all the assault rifles. It uh, does have less damage per bullet at 2,639 
crit damage per bullet than the QMZ we just looked at, but very slightly higher total damage potential, which is why it's just above it in the list. Number 28. Just above the XM4 in the list here is another assault rifle. This is a fully automatic Russian bullpup, the Groza. And this one does quite high damage. It was released at the very start of season one. So this is one of the newest weapons we have here in Cold War Zombies. And Pack-a-Punch, this thing gets the name the Tugarin. Again, apologies for pronunciation there. But uh, the Tugarin apparently is a mythical dragon-like creature from Eastern European fairy tales, which personifies evil and cruelty. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty cool name. Triple Pack-a-Punched, as we're seeing here, this thing actually does really decent damage. If you get critical hits, it does 3,168 damage per bullet, typically, which is actually more damage than most of the other assault rifles, which is why it's further up the list, along with the higher total damage potential. So yeah, it's a pretty cool gun, actually. I don't mind this one. Number 27. Making number 27 on our list, we have a true classic, the AK-47. And this uh, weapon actually has the highest damage per bullet of any of the assault rifles in Cold War Zombies at the moment. But it does have the slowest rate of fire as well of all the assault rifles. Interestingly, it has about the same damage per second and exactly the same total ammo as the Krieg 6. But it does do more total damage overall based on the amount of ammo multiplied by the bullet damage. Speaking of bullet damage, when pack a punch, this thing actually is called the Rasputin's Retribution. Uh, nice bit of alliteration there from Treyarch. Um, and it does 3,346 crit damage per bullet on average. So yeah, still not a fantastic weapon, but not too bad compared to some of the other assault rifles. Number 26. Next on our list is the AK-47's little brother, the AK-74U SMG. Another all-time classic little weapon. This thing is actually above its big brother on the list because it has more damage. So Pack Punch, this thing actually does 3,520 crit damage, but also it has exactly the same amount of ammo and does more potential damage overall at 53.7 thousand compared with 51 thousand for the AK-47. This cheeky little SMG, once pack punched, is called the AK-74 No FU, and uh, it really doesn't mess around when it comes to killing zombies in the early rounds. So this thing is pretty good, has a really good uh, rate of fire, and as we said, it actually does more damage than its bigger brother in the assault rifle category. Number 25. Next, we have another real classic here in Cold War Zombies. This is the MP5 submachine gun. And this is known as a real beast in multiplayer in Cold War. But in Zombies, it's just kind of below middle tier, if you like. It does have the highest rate of fire of all the SMGs in Cold War Zombies at the moment. And it also has the second highest total ammo, which is a positive. However, it does fall short in having the weakest single bullet damage of the SMGs. And pack a punched it is called the Mystic Pony Express. And it will do around about 3,036 uh, average damage for critical hits. Um, which is uh, very slightly higher damage potential overall than the weapons that are below it in this list. Number 24. Next, we have one of the most iconic weapons in Call of Duty Zombies, the M1911 pistol. And this used to be the starting pistol, obviously, in most of the previous Treyarch Call of Duty Zombies that we've seen. Uh, you used to be able to empty the 8-round magazine into a zombie's leg in the first round and then knife it to get max points. But as you can see, <laughs> it just has slightly too much damage to do that. And the points don't work that way anymore anyway. But uh, is this a good weapon in any way, shape or form? Well, not really. 
Um, as you can see, it does more damage than it used to do. However, when you pack a punch it, it uh, becomes the pain and suffering. No longer do we have Mustang and Sally. And it's almost like sacrilege what they've done to this thing. It's traditionally, when you pack a punch this, it becomes a monster with explosive bullets. Um, and also it used to uh, be dual wield as well with Mustang and Sally in uh, most of the other Call of Duties. Uh, obviously not World at War where it was uh, a single weapon. But uh, yeah, now it just gets a damage buff. So it's kind of disappointing and lame to be honest with you. Triple pack a punch, your typical critical damage you're going to get is 7,392 damage per bullet. You're seeing me getting some double yellow crits here though because I'm using Deadshot Dacry on full health zombies. Number 23. The next weapon we have is another rocket launcher, the Sigma 2, which is called the Omega 3FA when pack a punch. Interestingly, it has the words keep clear scrawled across the top of the breach at the back of this weapon. And to be honest, that's probably some advice you want to take with this one. It uh, does do relatively good damage at 17,216 damage per rocket um, when it's triple pack punched. Um, and if you keep in mind the fact that if you group up all the zombies and uh, damage them all at once with the splash damage, it can potentially do that you know, times 30 or however many zombies you have in your group. So that's why it's higher in this list than you might expect. But it's not really a practical weapon to use into the higher rounds. It does have the drawback of doing splash damage to yourself if you're too close to the explosion. It does reload all three rockets at once as well as a bit of a bonus for Packer punching it. However, it would take between two and three shots to kill a max health zombie past the health cap. So all in all, not a weapon you really want to get out of the box. Number 22. Next on our list is the Bullfrog SMG. And this is a really interesting weapon. It actually has the highest total ammo and magazine size of any of the SMGs. It almost has LNG levels of ammunition that come with this thing. Pack a punch, it'll have a total of 500 ammo. And as far as the damage goes, it's got a fairly high rate of fire. And obviously you can hold that trigger down for quite a long time until you have to reload. Um, in terms of damage, it does around 3,168 uh, Pack-a-Punched crit damage, which isn't too bad. And overall, the damage potential that this thing has is why it is uh, um, up higher in the list than many of the other SMGs. So I actually find this weapon a lot of fun to use, particularly if you get it early in the game. And this has an interesting pack punch name. It's called the High Anxiety. I'm not quite sure what that's referencing. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. Number 21. Next, we have the Milano 821 SMG. This kind of looks like an Uzi to me. And pack a punch, this thing is called the Succubus Stinger. Uh, reference to some sort of sex demon, I guess makes some sort of sense if you're a Treyarch, but anyway, uh, as far as this thing goes, it has really good damage per bullet for an SMG. It actually does 4,259 Pack-a-Punch critical damage, uh, which is pretty decent. It has 420 total ammo Pack-a-Punched as well. Um, but apart from that, it has the fastest reload speed of any SMG at around 2.2 seconds. And it's pretty fun to use. It has a super high rate of fire. You do have to reload fairly frequently because it burns through the ammo in the clip pretty fast. Um, but it does reasonable amount of, amounts of damage even at, uh, you know, your moderate sort of rounds like we're looking at right here. Number. Next on the list is our last SMG in this rankings list, the KSP-45. This is as high as the SMGs got in this list. And this is an interesting one. This is a three round burst fire SMG. It does the highest single bullet damage of any of the SMGs with 5,082 triple pack punch crit damage. Um, and it also has the highest damage potential of the SMGs, which is why it is where it is on the list here today. 
It is worth mentioning I did forget to buy Deadshot Dacry uh, on this one occasion here in this testing, but that's only going to affect the, those double yellow crits, which are pretty rare anyway. Anyway, um, this thing does tend to run out of ammo pretty quick because it has the lowest ammo of the SMGs at 360 total rounds Pack-a-Punch. And Pack-a-Punch, it is called the Herald of Woe. Number 19. Ranked at number 19, we have a tactical rifle, the DMR-14, which is called the Demolisher K-14 once pack-a-punched. If you're looking at this, at this thing and thinking, wow, this looks super familiar from other Call of Duty zombies, yeah, that's because it's pretty much the M14. It's just a variant, if you like. DMR just stands for Designated Marksman Rifle. Maybe they didn't get the rights to this thing. I'm not 100% sure. But in any case, this is a semi-automatic uh, marksman rifle. As you can see, it does kind of okay damage on a single bullet um, basis. So once you pack punch this three times, and if you're hitting critical hits, you will get 5,104 damage uh, per bullet, um, which is sort of okay getting towards mid-range of most of our weapons here in Cold War Zombies. So if semi-automatics are your thing, then this is probably going to be a sort of okay weapon, but not something you want to hang on to uh, into the higher rounds too much. Number 18. Just above the DMR-14, we have another semi-automatic tactical rifle. This is the Type 63. And uh, I guess based on the type part of that name, Pack-a-Punch, this is called the Helvetica. <laughs> so yeah, it's a really bad Treyarch joke about a font, believe it or not. Well done, Treyarch. Taking humor to whole new levels there. But <laughs> getting to the weapon itself, it's a very slightly better version, if you like, of the DMR-14. It does uh, 5,344 damage per bullet, typically when you have triple packer punched on those critical hits. But most of the other stats are almost identical to the DMR-14, including the total reserve ammo and stuff like that. So yeah, not too bad for semi-automatic if that is your thing. Number 17. Up next is a three round burst assault rifle, the AUG. And looking at this thing here in the inspection uh, screen, it looks like the uh, magazine is actually some kind of semi-transparent uh, plastic, which is actually really useful for checking how many bullets you've got left without taking the mag out. Uh, in real life, this thing was designed in Austria and used by the Austrian military. And somewhat confusingly, I guess if you're dyslexic, it's also manufactured in Australia, and a variant is used by the Australian Army. Anyway, in-game here, uh, when you pack-punch this thing, it actually does 4,989 uh, crit damage per bullet. And the burst fire actually uh, is fairly, has fairly good damage output um, as well. So it has a higher total damage um, capability than the other semi-automatic tactical rifles that are just below it in the list here. Number 16. At number 16, we're really starting to get into the spicy weapons now. This is the RPD LMG. And uh, this is actually uh, the LMG with the most ammunition once pack-a-punched. It has 540 total ammo um, that you can uh, use on the zombies. And uh, probably slightly less useful in this particular version of Zombies since you can buy ammo whenever you want. Super cheap all over the map. But anyway, Treyarch in their wisdom chose to include that feature. One of the other advantages of this LMG is it has the best mobility or sprint movement speed of all of the LMGs. It also has the second best rate of fire but the lowest damage per second of all the LMGs, which is why it's slightly down the list than some of the others. It does a total critical bullet damage once triple pack punched of 3,344 typically, which you're seeing here. And it's actually not too bad a weapon at all. Number 15. 
At 15, we have the Stoner 63 LMG. And in previous Call of Duties, we have had this weapon before, but it was used more of an assault rifle type of function. But here in Cold War Zombies, it's definitely in the LMG category. And it has the highest rate of fire of all the LMGs and by far the highest damage per second as well. So this thing is a really decent weapon, particularly once you pack a punch it. Once you pack a punch this thing, it becomes the psychotropic thunder. And uh, yeah, it is, uh, it's a pretty cool weapon actually. And it uh, has a, around a six second reload speed, uh, standard like this with no attachments. And as far as the single um, bullet damage goes, once you triple pack a punch this thing, uh, with your critical hits, you're going to be hitting for around 3,698 damage per bullet. So yeah, this thing is uh, it's pretty good actually. Number 14. Coming in at lucky number 13, we have another LMG, and this is the M60 LMG. This thing is a huge, huge beast of a weapon. This has the largest magazine size when pack punched of any of the LMGs, with a total of 150 rounds in the magazine, which is uh, pretty formidable. Which is always good in zombies when you're uh, laying down the lead against the undead. Uh, it also, believe it or not, has the best mobility or sprint movement speed of all the LMGs uh, that I tested here in the standard configuration. Even though it looks kind of bulky and awkward looking. Um, obviously, you're not going to quite have the same mobility speed as if you're running around with a pistol or an SMG, of course. But uh, Pack-a-Punch, this thing is called the Slow Burn. Now, some of the drawbacks with this thing is that it does have uh, the lowest damage per second of all the LMGs. And single bullet damage, triple pack punched at legendary quality, you're going to be looking at 3,344 damage per bullet. Uh, it does have the second best rate of fire. And the reason it's higher in the list than the other couple of LMGs we've looked at is it because it has the highest total damage potential, which is the total ammunition multiplied by the damage per bullet. So hopefully that makes sense. This is a uh, is a real beast in Cold War Zombies as well as in multiplayer. Number 13. Coming in at unlucky number 13 is the M16. A lot of people really like this weapon in Cold War Zombies and for good reason. It is a three round burst assault rifle prior to being pack-a-punched, but once you pack-a-punch this thing, it becomes the Skull Splitter and actually becomes a six-round burst assault rifle. Uh, back in Black Ops 1, the M16, when you pack-a-punched, it used to be called the Skull Crusher. I don't know what the fixation is with skulls, but anyway. And it used to have a grenade launcher attachment as well. But here in Cold War Zombies, it doesn't really do anything exciting like that. It does get, obviously, a weapon boost. And it has almost identical damage to the Helvetica that we looked at earlier on a per bullet basis, but obviously that much faster rate of fire with the burst. It also has more ammo than the Helvetica, but because it's that six round burst, pack a punch, you'll empty the ammo in only 60 pulls of the trigger, which is pretty crazy. It does around 5,412 pack a punch critical damage, but if all six bullets in the burst were to hit critically, it could do up to 32k. Number 12. Next we have a pistol, the Magnum. Why is this so high up the list I hear you shout at me from the other side of the screen? Well, let me explain. Although it does reload painfully slowly each bullet individually prior to being pack-a-punched, once you pack-a-punch this thing, that speed is uh, drastically increased as it gets a speed reloader. But it's the damage, really, that makes this thing so good. Uh, Pack-a-Punch, this thing has the ability to kill a max health normal zombie in a single bullet. Uh, this is fairly uncommon, as it would usually take two yellow crit shots to achieve this. But on an individual bullet basis, it does around 15,679 uh, crit damage, typically. And interestingly, the total damage potential that this thing has is 78,000 damage versus only 71,000 damage of the M16, which is just below this in the list. 
Uh, pack a punch, by the way, this thing is called the private eye and femme fatale if uh, you actually have it in the dual wheel, dual, dual wield configuration, <laughs> if I can get that out. So yeah, if you haven't tried this too much, uh, take another look at it. You might like it. Then again, there are some better weapons which we'll get to next. Number 11. Not quite making the top 10 here at number 11 in our weapon rankings is the first iteration of the variants for the D.I.E. Wonder Weapon here in Cold War Zombies, the Thermophasic Upgrade. D.I.E., by the way, stands for Decompressive Isotopic Estrangement Machine. I'll quiz you guys on that at the end of the video. Anyway, the reason this is so far down the list for a Wonder Weapon variant is that it just doesn't seem to be that practical or do that much damage. Um, it is in the top 10, though because it does do a pretty good uh, fireball blast, which can take out, out, you know, nine zombies or so if you hoard them up. Uh, interestingly, it does seem to do 50,000 damage against the elites, uh, the bosses in the map, uh, compared to 11,746 damage, um, typically to your regular zombies. And also it has that secondary suck function, which also damages zombies for a significant amount of 1,754 and uh, recharges the ammo, which is quite useful. As with all DIE variants, this is also extremely useful during insta-kills, as you can continuously kill zombies around you using the primary and secondary functions. Number 10. Making our top 10 is the Pellington 703 Sniper. This has the fastest rate of fire and much faster ADS time of all of the snipers. When pack punched, this thing can kill max health normal zombies at any round in the game, no matter how high you go with critical kills. Pack a punch, it's called the Pellegrino della Morte. It does have the slowest reload time of all snipers as each bullet is loaded individually. However, once you pack a punch this thing, it actually uh, makes up for that a little bit by reloading two bullets at a time. However, it does have very low ammo reserves, as do most of the sniper rifles, meaning that you can run out of ammo pretty quickly, and you'll have to be constantly buying ammo back, most likely, if you're using this into the higher rounds. But as I said, it does have the capability of killing zombies to any round you care to go to once you pack punch it. Number nine. At number nine of the best weapons in Cold War Zombies, we have the LW3 Tundra Sniper Rifle. Packer punched, it's called the Permafrost. This thing is just incredible, which is why it's so high up in this list. Let's talk about why. Basically, damage is why. Damage is what this thing is all about. So once you uh, get this up to legendary quality and pack a punch it three times, it's actually capable of doing an incredible 80,134 damage um, to zombies if you get a critical hit on a full health zombie. And it's pretty easy to get that consistently as well. So what that means is because zombies health caps out from round 41 onwards to 30,001 health for your regular zombies, you can go to any round you care to go to and still one-shot your regular zombies with this thing very, very easily. And keep in mind, you're also going to be doing penetration damage to any zombies that you hit behind the initial zombie as well. It has a fast reload as well, which is worth mentioning because it uses a magazine. And in perfect conditions with this thing, it's capable of doing more damage than just about anything else in Cold War Zombies. So check this out, guys, as an example. So most of the testing I've done here, obviously, without any attachments. But here I have added the 28.2 barrel and dead wire. And I just delete these megatons. Yep, you saw that right. That's 1.8 million damage on both of those uh, megatons, which is just insane. Probably the only downside with this thing is the lack of ammo. Number eight. Coming in at number eight, we actually have a melee weapon, the knife. Now this is the only melee weapon we have in the game at the moment, but we do have a couple more coming, apparently in season one, uh, which will 
likely have different ranges, but probably the same damage stats. So the knife, why is it so good? Well, basically, even if you don't increase the quality of this and just have it as your starting weapon, before it's pack-a-punched, it will still be a one-hit kill on zombies up until round 14, which is pretty unbelievable when you think about it. But if you do upgrade it to legendary quality, even before it's pack a punch, once again, it will still be a one hit kill on zombies up until round 25. And even after that, if you manage to get the two times multipliers by knifing the zombies in the upper chest, let's just say neck and head area, you do get double damage for that. Once you pack a punch this thing, though, it becomes the closing argument. And this thing just does incredible damage. So. Triple Pack-A-Punch, this thing does 35,200 regular damage, which one hits any regular zombie to any round you want to go to because of their health capping out at 30,001. But uh, if you aim for the upper chest area, the uh, neck and head multiplier will kick in, giving you double that, which is 70,400 damage, which is just mind-boggling when you think about it. However, in the higher rounds, because the zombies start sprinting like crazy after round 55 or so, uh, you're going to get beaten up a fair bit by the zombies and get your armor broken too much for this to be a super practical way of killing a lot of zombies. So it's really just good in the higher rounds for getting rid of zombies that might be blocking your path and stuff like that. Number 7 Next, we have another variant of the D.I.E. Wonder Weapon. This is the Cryo Emitter upgrade. And what this thing does is it fires a beam of ice which continuously damages, slows, and freezes zombies uh, the longer that it's held on them. It has a secondary suck function as we've talked about uh, before with the Thermophasic upgrade that damages zombies and also reloads the ammo from zombie kills. The suck function on this one actually does the most damage for the suck on any of the um, DIE variants. It does 2,665 damage, which is actually higher than the primary damage, which is 2,000, although it seems like the primary is a faster rate of fire. This is actually an effective weapon for slowing down the boss or elite zombies to the point where they can't fire at you continuously with their projectiles and just makes it easier to kill them although it's much slower than some other methods however because it fires a continuous beam rather than discharging a large amount of ammo at once it becomes less effective as a secondary number six at number six in our list we have the Hauer 77 and i know i know People in the Hauer gang are going to be mad at me for putting this below the Gallo, but I'll try and explain why. Just to put it simply, in the testing that I did, this thing with the max damage attachments does 61,000 damage per second. The Gallo actually does 72,000 damage per second. So that's including shooting all of the shells and then reloading with the max capacity magazines and the max damage barrel attachment. However, some of the advantages the Hauer has over the Gallo is that it actually does 13.35% more damage per shot. And it also has more than twice as fast a reload with the max capacity magazine than the Gallo. Like the Gallo, it reloads four shells at a time once pack a punched. And here's some footage that I thought I'd show you guys with the uh, max damage barrel attachment and the Stanag eight round tube, just to show you guys what this thing is capable of uh, with a ring of fire um, in the higher rounds. Anyway, if you're wondering, the pack a punch name Orion 777 is actually an obscure reference to the Blade Runner actor Rutger Hauer whose character references a battle near Orion. Number five. Sneaking into the top five here, we have the Gallo SA-12 shotgun. Hopefully settling once and for all the debate between zombie slayers on which is the best shotgun in Cold War Zombies, the Gallo or the Howler. Then again, maybe not, but I did my best. So the Gallo does do 19% more DPS than the Hauer, and it also has 20% more ammo as well, 
Uh, when pack punched, it also reloads four shells at a time and becomes fully automatic. With increased magazine attachment, it has a 27 shell magazine compared with the uh, 20 shell magazine on the Hauer if that has the increased magazine attachment as well. The pack punch name is obviously a play on words to do with gallows. And just to give you guys again a reminder that this thing, when you have the max damage barrel and the maximum ammunition tube fitted, it does 72,000 damage per second compared to the Howler's uh, 61,000 damage per second. However, um, I'm going to show you some footage here with those uh, two attachments. The maximum damage barrel, 24.8 inch, uh, which gives 180% damage, plus the Stanag 12 round tube. You can actually see this hits for 179k in the Ring of Fire, and that's compared to 203k that the Howler hits for in the same circumstances. So both shotguns are incredibly powerful weapons, and it'll be interesting to see what the new Street Sweeper shotgun will turn out to be like once that's released a little bit later here in Season 1. Number 4 Coming in at number 4, we have another variant of the DIE Wonder Weapon here in Die Machine, and this is the Electro Bolt Upgrade. This uh, is a pretty amazing uh, variant on the uh, DIE Wonder Weapon. It fires a beam of electricity, as you can see, which does more damage the longer the trigger is held down. Scaling from an initial 1000 damage up to 2000 after half a second, then 3000 after one second, 7,500 after 2 seconds and finally hitting the max damage cap of 15,000 after 4 seconds. It also reloads by zombie kills with a secondary suck function like the other DIE variants, only doing about 240 damage per zombie. But uh, the actual electric beam that it shoots is capable of taking down megatons in the high rounds quicker than any other DIE variant. Uh, also, the task to actually upgrade to the Electro Bolt is probably the most annoying of all the tasks to upgrade um, the DIE, although it's still fairly simple. Number three. Making it into the top three here in the best weapons in Cold War Zombies, at number three, we have another DIE variant, which is the Nova 5 upgrade. And uh, this functions by firing a burst of Nova 5 gas, which consumes 15 ammo per shot. And the gas cloud that it shoots lingers as an area of effect that does continuous damage to any zombies that enter it. You can actually use it in early rounds by shooting it in front of you, leading the horde into it, and then turning and sucking to basically destroy an entire horde, as you can see me do right there. Uh, in higher rounds, it's not quite as effective um, if you try to do that with it. But you can still group up zombies and just basically run them around inside the gas cloud. Um, but it's also pretty effective as a secondary weapon if you're using the ray gun to get the high rounds. Because you can use it during insta-kills using that suck function. The suck actually does more damage in this than the base shockwave. It does uh, 552 suck damage. The gas does 1500 damage uh, which ticks every few seconds as well. And you can see here, you can use it pretty effectively in between using the ray gun in the ring of fire. Um, pretty much comparable to the shockwave. But the shockwave could be seen as superior due to that blast you can do with it. And also you don't have the gas clouds obscuring your vision. Now while testing this, you can see I actually discovered that you can use this just to continuously refresh the gas cloud here on the back of the truck here in Die Machine. And without even bothering to use the Ring of Fire at all, or the Ray Gun, you can, can just keep that gas cloud up and continuously suck to uh, destroy the zombies to pretty much as high a round as you want to go to. Obviously, you're still going to have to deal with the Megatons when they come along and stuff like that, but uh, it's pretty incredible that this is even possible with this variant. Number 2 Coming in at number two is the weapon of choice of our little skeleton friend here, which is the DIE Shockwave. The base version, believe it or not, of the Wonder Weapon is actually better in many ways due to the utility that it has in getting to high rounds here in Die Machine in Cold War Zombies. So uh, what it actually does is it fires a large blast of energy consuming 15 ammo per shot. It actually has only a four shot magazine. Um, and it also reloads, as we've talked about before, by killing zombies with a secondary uh, suck function, which does 318 damage. 
The actual blast only does 1500 damage, but uh, inside the Ring of Fire, which is where you'll most likely be using this in high rounds, it actually does 75,000 uh, blast damage and 1785 suck damage. So this is usually just kept in reserve uh, for insta-kill rounds and stuff like that, um, or you're, while you're waiting for your Ring of Fire to um, do its thing. Um, but during insta-kills, you can basically suck and blast continuously without needing to stop <laughs> for the entire insta-kill and uh, just decimate any zombies that are around you, which is why it's uh, pretty awesome. Um, in the lower rounds, you can easily kill the elite zombies for the first few times that they appear as well. But uh, generally, this is just good as a secondary uh, for getting to the high rounds. So that is the DIE Shockwave, which is a pretty awesome secondary backup weapon for getting to high rounds. Number one. Coming in at number one, we have the Ray Gun, to nobody's surprise. This is actually the best weapon in Cold War Zombies, and I'm glad that it finally has its place at the top of the food chain in Zombies, where it belongs. Because in some previous Call of Duties, this thing was almost disappointing to get out of the box, um, compared to some of the other weapons that they had in the, uh, in the game. So they finally elevated it to its uh, rightful stature as a legendary weapon here. Although it's already copped a nerf since launch, this thing still does an incredible amount of damage. Um, once it's pack punched three times, you can actually get around 15,488 damage uh, per shot. However, that damage is uh, done at an incredible rate of fire and includes splash damage as if it were an explosive weapon. Although it does do splash damage, it very rarely actually damages the player. Although if you aim it directly at your feet, you will notice a little bit of damage uh, that will happen. So just be a little bit careful with that. But as you can see, even in relatively close quarter situations, uh, as long as you're reasonably careful with it, you can avoid uh, doing any self damage with this thing. And it's just that incredible splash damage combo with the rate of fire and good base damage that makes this such a great weapon. You can literally just sit there and fire this thing in front of you and kill all the zombies that try to attack you. Uh, it is pretty crazy, actually, in the high rounds. The Pack-a-Punch name, by the way, Porter's X2 Raygun, is named after the uh, weapon artist at Treyarch, Max Porter, who came up with the Raygun as a side project. So there you go. Now you know who to thank for such an epic weapon in zombies and a real icon as well. And so we've come to the end of the video for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. This took a lot of work, so hopefully you've got something out of it. And now you know which weapon you want to get out of the mystery box or use in your starting loadout or to get to those high rounds and slay the zombies. Anyway, if you have some different uh, ideas for how you would rank the weapons or any tips and tricks for the weapons that I've mentioned, leave them in the comments section below. But for now, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Slippery Jim out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit that little bell thing.